Warning, this episode contains adult language, mature situations, overpowered airheaded main characters, VMMORPG antics, mid-maxing into one stat, exasperated system admins, humorous moments, and new manga releases. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Listener discretion is advised. Episode 431, Bofuri, I don't want to get hurt, so I'll max out my defense. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Spark and Monger View. This is your host Zan saying konnichiwa, aloha, buongiorno, and what's up? Hey, it's Greta. And we are back again for another fun-filled episode of this wonderful podcast. And more importantly than that, this is a very special episode because this is episode 1001 of the podcast. Out of all the different podcast shows we've done, we've done 1000 and this is our 1001st episode. How crazy is that? I've been doing this for way too long, but in our series, this is the 431st episode of the Spark and Manga Review, so hooray! Hooray! Yes, and I'm going to keep doing this for a long, long time. I'm surprised, though, that I'm, and I'm pretty sure that the earlier episodes of this podcast are going to be taken out of the feed, so if you want the earlier ones, you're going to have to go to our website, which is at www.spirekin.com. Yes. And if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Spirekin, or some podcasts and vain reviews about connectedly enhanced narratives, is a podcast where we talk about fun, geeky, nerdy things, and we tell you the pros and cons about it, whether it be video games, TV shows, anime, manga, conventions, life in general. We have fun with it all. And since it's the manga review, obviously we're talking about... Manga! And we tell you how the art style is, the overarching plot, the characters, the production quality, and most importantly, if it's worth investing your time in or not. Now, like we said, you can check out any of our earlier episodes at www.sparkin.com. You can also find us on Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, Stitcher, and various other social media sites. Just type in S-P-I-R-A-K-N in any of the search engines, and I guarantee you'll find us one way or the other. Remember to like and subscribe us. And if you enjoy what we do, you can support our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash, you guessed it, Spirekin. And... To all of our Spark and Society members, welcome. We've got some new content for you to enjoy, including some behind-the-scenes stuff. And we're setting up for a video of just when I make all the mistakes on the video. Just um, me using one explicative word over and over and over again for about 15 minutes. I think it's going to be really fun or it's going to be taken down. I think most of them are out of frustration about my pun game. No, 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 no. Some are just me making mistakes. But... I digress. So let's get to it because this is our 431st manga review and we've got a fun one to talk about. One which you actually know of because of the weirdness behind it. So if you remember from the last episode, I spun that one that only... The Wheel of Manga! Yes, I spun it and it dictated unto me that it'd be reviewing a manga that was written by Yumi Khan and is actually an adaptation of a light novel series that she wrote in, or she or he wrote, in 2017, which had 12 volumes. The manga has currently four volumes and was started in 2018. Anyway, so the manga is illustrated by Jiro Omoto and published by Katakawa Shoten. Hooray! There is an anime adaptation of this. There is several other versions of it, but we can get this over here by one of the best publishing companies ever, Yen Press! Yay! Yes, and unfortunately we only have one volume of the manga out, but we have four volumes of the light novel out. So if you like the light novel, you can check those out, and that's a thing still Yen Press, or it's Seven Seas, not entirely sure. But I digress, and this is a Senin fantasy isekai manga, even though it's not technically my definition of an isekai. Because my definition of an isekai is you're transported to another world, not that you're kind of playing a video game in another world, but apparently that is now the definition is you are focusing on another world if it's a virtual world. So I guess this is an isekai. And this is also kind of slice of lifey, just a little bit. Yes. And this manga, which has the actual name of Itai no wai iano nano de bogyoroku ni kyokufuri shitai tu Omiomas is known to us as. I don't want to get hurt, so I'll max out my defense. Bofuri. This is a very weird story about a young girl named Honjo Kaide, and she is told by her best friend to join the new VR MMORPG video game, New World Online, and she has to play because it's awesome and amazing. However, her best friend can't be on there for the first couple of weeks because she's been grounded which kind of sucks womp womp 
And uh, and that's like the hardest part when if you're not a video gamer, you need help because you're developing your character. So what happens when you're not a video gamer and you're left alone to your own devices? Well, stuff happens. And uh, for those of you who are unaware of, VR MMORPG is a virtual reality MMORPG. You're able to go online and you're able to feel stuff and touch stuff and taste stuff, which that's the weirder part that they're able to taste the food, which is strange, but whatever. If you didn't know, don't feel bad, neither did I. Zan had to explain it a few times. But, so, Kaide is going to make her character, and because no one really tells her no, she it's one of those things where it's like, don't tell someone that something is impossible and they'll do it. That's what happens. So she's going to make a character, and she's like, okay, what do I change myself? So, well, my name translates into Maple. So I'm going to name myself Maple. Kind of funny. And she doesn't want to get hurt. So she's looking at the classes, looking at the classes, and she decides that she's going to pick a great shield, which a great shield bearer, their job is to just hold up shield. They have a big shield and they have a little sword. And she's like, cool, that'll protect me. But um, let's look at the stats. There's vitality, there's strength, there's agility, there's constitution, there's IQ. You know what? I don't want to get hurt. So I am going to put all my stats, all my points into vitality, which is defense. And because of this, she is slow. She's not a good fighter. No. But she's indestructible. She is. She becomes known as the walking fortress because she has maxed out defense and nothing else. So like when she's in the town, everyone's walking around and she's just kind of walking super slow. And everyone's like... Yeah, I'm just walking and I'm outpacing you. What the hell? She's like, I'm coming. Like they have to actually slow down to to have her catch up. But or she, someone might want to, I don't know, pick her up and run. Yes, that happens later. But so she starts off with this and she ends up actually going in and she's trying to figure out what she can do cuz she really can't do much, but she discovers that when things try to attack her, it's doing no damage to her. And as an added benefit, she's getting resistance to all the different things. So like a giant bee attacks her, which has a poison attack and poison resistance. And then she ends up using her shield in unconventional ways, like smushing things, which technically shields are not supposed to do. But it's like, you've developed a new skill called shield crush. And she ends up breaking the game because of her inexperience and her unknownness. Like she goes to a dungeon that's hidden that no one's able to defeat. And because she weird she comes up with a very strange plan to defeat this giant hydra monster and what does she do when it starts poisoning her well she has poison resistance so the poison isn't doing anything and then it tries to bite her and she's like don't try to bite me and then her stomach growls she's like i'm kind of hungry so she ends up eating the monster and it's like you are now known as as devourer and she gets the ability called predator so she eats essentially absorbs the energy of other players it's kind of disturbing but unthought of so she outplays the game yes because the game is like okay this is not said you can't do this so i guess you could do this and the admin are like what the hell's going on what is with this girl there's and they're like technically i think that's right and they're horrified by what she's doing like they're being driven crazy by these shenanigans that maple is doing and they say you're more of a last boss than our last boss because most of their last bosses were made to troll players and she's able to defeat them like saying you're not supposed to be able to defeat them how the hell is she beating them because she's so much higher at one point she has this ability called hydra which kills anything it touches she absorbs the hydra and that gives her her main attack is like hydra and it just kills everything and they say fine you can get the hydra but we're gonna nerf it so you can only use it 10 times a day and still she's able to defeat it and then she gets more and more insane powers and that's what happens in this um then her friend finally uh, her friend comes back because she's done being grounded so she can play again and her friend is like uh what is the opposite of a noob no she's a pro player she's like a super pro player so she and she's playing the game like the right way she grinded out the levels she did all the stuff she got she's super fast she's well she restarts she's starting now as a new player because she had to restart but she already knows how to do all this stuff so combine super pro player with indestructible girl and they're basically the dynamic duo yes 
And no one. So you normally you'd have to get like a troop together, right? You'd have a, a guild. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. A guild. See, I, I knew some of the, I got the idea. I just don't yeah. have the words. So you would get the guild together and like go, go on missions and stuff, but they really don't need anybody else. You just need the two of them. And they just kind of just do their own thing and cause havoc in this game. It's really compelling and fun and strange. And it's funny when Sally shows up, that's uh, Risa, her best friend's name in the game. When she shows up, she notices everyone's talking about this girl with the shield and that she ranked number three in this event like that happened. Like no one could defeat her. She killed everybody. She didn't attack anybody, but she killed 2,000 people. And then she sees Maple and she's like, wait, 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 what? And then she sees her stat. She's like, okay, so then fine. You're going to be all defense. I'll do strength and agility. That's where I'll min-max. And... They're, like you said, the dynamic duo. And then they're going to meet more people as the light novel and the manga go on. And they end up forming a guild. With more like-minded weirdos. Um, by weirdos, you mean awesome people? Oh, well, one of them is the first person she met who is constantly showing up in the... So, between each chapter, they have the comment section. And one of the characters we discover named Koromu, who's like one of the pro players, like the number two player in the game, is constantly saying like, yeah, I, I met her. She's kind of scary, and but she's so fun. And it's cool to see all the random things she does. Like the fact that later on, she gets woolly armor. And it's like, the woolly armor, it's supposed to just collect wool, and she ends up using it to poison things because she's absorbed so much poison. Because randomly. Because she can throw it out, and it's saturated in venom or something from something else and so it just kills everybody yes or the fact that she and it, then she like rolls around in it like this is so much fun and the best is she ends up getting because they break the system again they beat an unbeatable boss and they get two monster eggs and so they're like oh you get two monsters what are you gonna do first off you're gonna they uh sally gets one and maple gets another and sally gets a wolf who gives her the ability to split into multiple forms kind of cool and she gets a turtle that she names syrup because maple syrup. And it turns out, first off, that syrup has a higher agility than she does. So maple, so syrup, the turtle, is faster than maple. But she can ride syrup. Well, she gives her the ability of psychokinesis so it could, it could, tell, it could fly itself. And she makes it be able to become giant. So they make a giant flying fortress... And then she's like, oh, you know what? I'm going to try a, a magical spell. And she's going to make it rain. And her ability has become saturated with poison. So you just see in the sky a giant turtle flying and tons of poison going down, killing everything. You're like, what the hell is that? It's the fly. It's the walking fortress. She can fly now. They're like, oh, no. What do we do? And she's just gaining XP just by killing things without just her screwing around. It's ridiculous and it's fun. And we talked earlier a couple episodes back about now originally it is ridiculous and it is fun originally this bothered you a little bit oh it totally bothered me because of the fact that as a gamer she's doing it wrong she's doing it wrong and at first i'm like what the hell but it's like when you're putting a whole bunch of groceries in your car is there a wrong way to put them all in if they all fit in there true and eventually you embrace the stupidity or the insanity of it and it makes sense and it just and like i was saying a couple episodes ago, I talked about Reborn as a Space Mercenary. I pilot the greatest ship. And that one, it's super broke, super Gary Stu, super all the women love me, all this does this. And he just is kind of perfect at everything, and it all works out for him. And that really upset me because it just felt really wrong and unearned. This one, on the other hand, she's not perfect at everything. She's really not. Like, she is super, like, she's super slow. She's not strong. She's kind of dumb, but she's got a heart of gold and you really end up liking her. Like at one point an enemy shows up and they become friends and she's like, okay, we're, we're all handcuffed together and we have to stay up. And the first thing she does is she gets this item that should be hers. And she's like, you know what? Here, you take it. She's a good person. And she's a good friend. Yeah, she she helps a bunch of people. Like, there's a bunch of these... Do we find out what happens in school and stuff? Because isn't her, like... Oh, you do find out that she gets in trouble. After the first, second event, she gets in... There's a whole chapter based on her, like, almost flunking out of class because she's falling asleep. And then, in the middle of gym class, she's like, cover! Because that's her teleporting and she just... Nothing happens. She's like, what the hell? And it's very slice of lifey. However, there are story arcs. There are things going on. She eventually ends up 
going to different levels and things change as the different events occur and there is progression in the story. Uh, if you watch the anime or read the light novels, you are aware that they start their own guild called Maple Tree because they live in a tree. Because, again, wah up wah up wah Maple Tree. And a lot of other incidents occur, including the fact that she helps these two girls who are also mid-maxing, but unlike her, they're not going into uh, defense or they're not going into speed. They're putting it all into strength. So they're these two girls who are like, oh, they're cute little twins, but they have hammers that are bigger than... than the maple tree headquarters and people are like oh they're not that heavy and like no one left it (laughs) yeah so it's a lot of little things but it works really well and it does mix and i enjoy that like all the awkward gamers found each other well some of them are not awkward some of them are just like yeah we're pro gamers we love this and we're scouted by some of the evil groups but you know what we want to see what happens next because maple is so insane we don't know what's going to happen what she's going to do next like, at one point, she gets the ability to turn into a giant monster, and it's like this really scary alien Godzilla-looking monster, and then it's Maple. And she's like, hi. She's like, oh, no, I fell on my butt. And you're like, this <laughs> giant monster just ate five people, and it just said that, and, it just, and you could picture the cutest voice ever. It's like, oh, that's Maple. Yeah. So, Besides that, let's get into besides the story. Let's get into the actual release. It's not bad. Yen Press does an excellent job with this. We have one volume out now. Volume two is coming out in September, and I've got to say the art style I don't hate. So one thing I haven't talked about in a while about a manga series, and I'm going to bring it up here, is the character design itself. And I've got to say, for a seinen series, this one is surprisingly wholesome. I mean, I like how Maple and the rest of the characters are designed. It's not too strange it's just very simple and they don't look like sex bombs there's no fan service to be seen in this which i'm kind of happy about for something because it's a nice change of pace i'd say like it reminds me a bit of the design from isaacen where they look like people but they look more like just cartoon people not like complete physical like we're gonna make this something to drool over it's just a character to look at and it's it's a good change of pace, in my opinion. It's a nice change of pace. Or do I sound completely insane with that thought? No, I I get what you're going for. Like, I know that there probably is, if you look online, I mean, Rule 34, there's going to be stuff. Don't get me wrong. But I like that it's just very simple, and all the characters look... They don't... It's not the main focus is... It's not bouncing boobs in your face and panty shots through short skirts from behind... Yes, that's it exactly. It just, that's just, the design is a design. It looks cute. It looks good. It'd be a cool cosplay if we did see people dressing up as it, but it's not crazy. It doesn't have to be done super sexy. I mean, it, yeah. I feel like all anime is a little bit. No, I can name three right now. Doraemon. Anpan Man. And okay. no, do not post pictures of Rule 34 Anpan Man. I do not need to see that. Please, for the love of God, I don't need to see that. And watch the mailbox is going to be full of on Pod Man Rule 34 images. Well, there you go. But, yeah. You just did it to yourself. Yes, I did. But overall, I got to say, I love the, the character design. It's well done. And I like how her armor looks functional and strong and it's designed well. And when she uses Predator, it looks really cool. When she uses Hydra, you see like the Hydra's coming out of the, the shield because she connects to the shield. But anyway. Let's talk about some of the other design work. It's different. I like the fact that when you see the super deformed forms, it's very super deformed, but it works. Like There's a scene of them talking with a map, and the map looks like Maple Drew. It's like Maple Vision. But then when you focus on her in like fighting, it's very detailed, and it's very... Um, but I like that because like when I've done more complex video games before, and then you have to go back and like you realize that maybe you do need to draw yourself a map, then I kind of thought that she was drawing herself. Which makes sense. I also like the fact that you have the admin show up, and when you see the admins, they're wearing business suits, and they have paper bags over their head, and they're constantly like, oh god, what did she do now? This is a fun, weird look that is very unusual and very different for your Isekai. And it's not one of the, I went to another world and I was retired, or I went to another world and I'm omnipotent. She does have problems, like we said. 
on her off time, you see her sleeping in class or she's learning to enjoy this thing. She's like, I played for seven hours today. That's kind of crazy. And she ends up liking this thing and enjoying it, but she still keeps her regular life there. There are gaps. She's not like all consumed. And she's not stuck there. It's just she's playing a game. And we see her adventures in the It's like watching a pro gamer. But she's not a pro gamer. She's just Maple. And she named her turtle Sierra. Yeah. And for that reason, I have to give uh, Bofuri, uh, I didn't want to get hurt, so I maxed out my defense, a borrow from a friend and don't return unless offered Pocky. It's really good. It's really good. There are a couple little missteps here and there. I like the fact that it is an Izakai. It is very by the numbers. She is super overpowered. But it's enjoyable and it's fun. And you do get action and you do get comedy. There is no romance because Maple is, she's like, she doesn't seem interested in romance at all. And they don't have any romance element. But there's nothing wrong with that. No, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm just going over the different genres that are also in here. I mean, you, there's not too much drama. It's more comical and fun. And while there is scary moments, like when they're fighting monsters, you know that in the end, okay, if they res out, they can just make a new character and they're still alive. They're still there. And they can fix themselves. So it's not the end of the world. Yes. It's not like in the other Isekais where if someone dies, they're gone forever. Like in How a Realistic Hero, which I can't wait to do to talk about that. At one point, they have to execute a major character because he's considered a traitor, and it's a very somber moment. You won't see that in this series. I don't think you will. And that's a good thing. This is a palate cleanser series, and it's a lot of fun. It's relaxing. It's enjoyable. Like, no stress. A little bit of stress for the admins. Yeah, but that's like, haha, their fault. And so, yeah, if you agree with us, let us know. You can email me personally at Zan, that's X-A-N, at Spyrokin.com. Leave a comment below, or you can tweet us at Spyrokin. Um, let us know what you think about Bofuri, if you like it or don't like it or think it's overdone. Or, here's another question. There's supposedly a video game for this. Would you play the video game based on this? It's not New World Order, it's actually based on Bofuri. Would you want to play as Maple as a character? I just think of it would. Of course, drive, I would want to be Maple. I think it would drive me crazy just being super slow, because I have to admit I like being a fast character. Because I've learned if you walk slow, it's a little annoying. But I digress. So remember, if you want to check out any of our earlier episodes, you can check them out at www.spirekin.com. You can email us at zanspirekin.com or tweet us at Spirekin. Uh, like and subscribe, and let's actually get to the manga releases for the week. And these came out August seventeenth, twenty twenty one, which is my dad's birthday. Kind of, and we have hey. thirty eight. New manga to talk about for this week. And I gotta admit, some of them I'm really excited for, and some of them I'm kind of shocked by. But let's talk about some of these. First off, we have Adachi and Shimamura, the light novel, volume 6. Then we have one of my personal favorites I've become super addicted to. Aphorata from Commonplace to World Strongest, the manga, volume 7, even though I'm just collecting the light novel. Then we have Asadora, volume 3, for those of you who are fans of Naoki Urasawa. Kind of. And then Assassin's Creed, Blade of Shaodun, volume 2, even though I heard some stores have released it early. Huh. Yep. I don't know. Then we have Bacano, Volume 17, The Light Novel. I think I'm behind on Bacano. Just... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I have like nine. Anyway, then we have Beauty and the Beast of Paradise Lost, Volume 1, The Month. Then Blue Period, Volume 4. Then Boarding School Juliet, Volume 16, which is about a boarding school where there's a girl who is put in the wrong dorm. <gasps> and there's a boy's dorm that they hate each other. Obviously, Romeo and Juliet. Anyway, we'll talk about that because it's on the Wheel of Manga. But anyway, then we have Bond and Book. It's okay. Then, for those of you who are fans of horrible people, bottom tier character Tomozaki, volume 6.5, the light novel. Yay! Yes, point six point five, which is going to deal with some of the side characters. We have Destiny Lovers, volume 7, the manga. Then, Disney's Cruella. Ooh. Which actually looks really good, because supposedly it's in color. Cruella de then we have Durarara SH, volume 2, the light novel, which actually, at Otakon, I gave away volume 1. Because I had to get rid of it. Anyway, Goat with the Clouds, North by Northwest, Volume 5. That's finally coming out? That was supposed to come out like two years ago. Holy shit. That was supposed to come out a while ago. That's a weird series. You know what I'm going to say? What? COVID. Yeah. Then you have Golden Kamui, Volume 23. Then Happy Sugar Life, Volume 10. That series is still going on. That series should have ended in Volume 6. Anyway, uh, Hazra Skill, the guild member with a worthless skill, is actually a legendary assassin, Volume 2, the manga. Level 1, Demon Lord and One Room Hero, Volume 1, the manga. 
Magical Girl Creepy Mommy and the Spoiled Princess, Volume 2. Yes, Magical Girl Creepy Mommy is finally been released. Magical Angel. Sorry, Magical Angel Creamy Mommy, because Creamy Mommy is the first Magical Girl, and they finally gave her a new series, or maybe it's the old series. Not entirely sure. But and that, the Spoiled Princess. No, that might be good or might be bad. Then we have Magistelf Bad Trip Volume 1, The Light Novel. I have no idea what this is about, but the, the actual title sounds really cool. And then the next one is not a manga. It's not a light novel. It's an actual book. It is Megumi Hayashibara's The Characters Taught Me Everything. Yes, it is the autobiography that we talked about by Megumi Hayashibara, the voice actress who has done so many vital and important characters. We're talking about Ranma-chan from Ranma 1 Half, Lena Inverse from Slayers, Faye Valentine from Cowboy Bebop, and if you are a fan of Neon Genesis Evangelion, she's the voice of Rei Ayanami and Yu Yukari, which kind of makes sense because they're technically the same person. (laughs) Well, no, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. One is Lilith and one is, is Yui, right? Yes. Or am I spoiling well, it's, it's not spoilers. That thing came out in 2000. I don't think that's spoilers. Is it spoilers? No. 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 Because it's so confusing. Eh, kind of. Anyway, we have Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt Volume 16. Awesome. Uh, Moshoku Tensei Jobless Reincarnation Volume 12. Do you know that's still considered one of the most popular mangas and light novels? That stupid series? Really? That, was, that had such a disturbing opening. I mean, the kid's like, yeah, I'm listening to my parents bang. Yeah, this is normal. No. A little pervy for my taste, but it's popular. And if you like this, I'm not hating on it. Don't worry, we'll do a review of it when it comes on the wheel. Uh, my status as an assassin obviously feeds the heroes, the light novel volume. School Zone Girls volume 2. Censor, the manga by Junji Ito, which everyone is talking about as the most important and greatest manga to be released as of this date. Like, New York Times, New York Post, the Boston Post, several other newspapers are actually talking about censor, which is crazy. It's Junji Ito, the guy who wrote Uzumagi. I mean, if you like horror, this is your shtick. But this one's actually kind of cool because it's based on a phenomena that takes place on a lot of islands like Hawaii, where when... A volcano erupts, a bunch of silky things fall to the ground. But apparently these silky things drive people mad. Cosmic horror. Anyway, then we have Shiori's Diary Volume 1. Slow Life in Another World, I Wish the Manga Volume 1. Super Women in Love, Honey Trap and Rapid Rabbit Volume 2. For those of you who are Yuri fans. That Wolf Boy is Mine, The Omnibus Volume 1 and 2. The Ancient Megas Bride, Wizard Blues, Volume 3. The Irregulars at Magic High School, Volume 7. The Undead King's Reign of Peace, Volume 1, The Light Novel. Thigh High, Rewa Hanamari Academy, Volume 2. This doesn't at all sound like a porn. Thigh High? Yeah. Unless they're talking about thigh highs. Like thigh high stockings. But that doesn't help much. No. Anyway. Uh, then you have Urasai Yatsura, Volume 11. Cool if you're a fan of Lum. Then Yokai Girls, Volume 14. Then a certain series about riding bicycles. And Hime, Hime. Yes. A new volume of Yawamushi Pedal, Volume 18. And then finally, we have Zom 100, The Bucket List of the Dead, Volume 3. And for me, the ones I'm most excited for for this week are, well, Zom 100, Urasayetsura, Sensor, Mobile Suit Gundam, The Characters Taught Me Everything by Megumi Hayashibara, um... Bakano, Blue Period, and then Tomozaki, and Aphoretta, and Asadora. Those are the ones I'm interested in. You didn't really narrow that down very much. I did. I did 7 out of 38. That's not bad. I didn't do all 38, because some of them I'm kind of horrified by. But, like, did any of those sound interesting to you? Uh, let's start with the Cruella one. That one's going to be pretty good. Maybe yeah. maybe someone will get that for their birthday cup. Mahaha. And don't judge me but the juliet in the boarding school juliet yeah but we need volume one that's volume 17 we don't just need volume one we need volume one through 16 True. but we'll have to get to that in the bill if you have one that you like let us know on twitter at spirekin let us know what title you are most interested in and now let's actually get to the part that you have all been waiting for and what are we talking about we're talking about that one that only the Yes, 
Best friends, the Wheel of Manga, except no substitute. Now, what is the Wheel of Manga? The Wheel of Manga is a Wheel of Fortune with 10 slots on. What I've done is I've assigned a manga tile to each of the 10 slots. So what we're going to do is we're going to spin the Wheel of Manga, and whatever number it lands on the manga that is in that spot is the one we review in the next episode of the Spire Can Manga Review, episode 432, or episode 1000 and something of the podcast. So let's spin and see what we're going to review, shall we? And what is, do we have some good stuff on the list right now? We have awesome stuff on the list. So let's spin and see what we're going to review in the next episode. And it's number four. Gigant. Ah, so in the next episode, we're reviewing, actually. You know, Gigant? Um, what is that about? Uh, it's made by the guy who did Gant. I don't want to. Oh, it. the wheel has spoken. True. All right, so in the next episode, I'm going to be reviewing a manga that was written by the creator of Gantz and also, um, you know, Yashiki. And what is it about? Well, a girl who turns two billion stories tall. Is it good? Is it bad? We're going to have to wait and find out till next week. But in other podcasting news, we are actually going to have to hurry up with our Bondathon, which is returning from a little bit of hiatus, because in a month and a half, James Bond, No Time to Die comes out. So we're going to be releasing more Bond reviews and some YouTube videos of us talking about our favorite Bond moments, characters, and maybe favorite Bond girl dress. Yes. Or should it just be Bond girls who look the best? Dresses. Well, we'll discuss that and we'll see that. We'll have you guys vote on it. We have a couple other things going on. I know TV Tuesday has been on hiatus, but we're releasing some other cool videos on the YouTube channel, including My Wife Watches, which is going to have us watching a couple of things, and then maybe one with me watching. A couple of stuff as well, including a show about smelly cats. Smelly cat, smelly cat, what are they feeding you? And we have some other trailer reactions on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Spyrocon. Remember to like and subscribe. Anyway, I think that's it for this episode. So as usual, I am your host, Zan. I'm Greta. We're Gonsville. Catch you guys next time and keep reading manga. See you later.